Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today we'll be going over how to Windsorize uh, data, specifically how to Windsorize data that is not normally distributed. Uh, I have done a previous video on how to Windsorize function or how to Windsorize variables in R, but that was with uh, unimodal data. And I'll leave a link down in the description if you want to go check that out. Um, but the issue is most data in the real world are not normally distributed. You'll have, for example, a lot of time series analysis, whether you're looking at stocks or you're looking at temperature or sales or anything over time, what's going to happen is you're going to have data that just fluctuates up and down all the time over time. And there's no kind of set pattern, right? And in that case, doing a normal Windsorization makes no sense. And, and you'll see why throughout the video, why it makes no sense. Um, but first, you know, let's go ahead and load up some libraries. So the first thing you'll need, or load up some packages. Uh, the first thing you'll need is ggplot. Then we'll need zoo, which you may or may not have already in your R environment. Uh, this will let us use a function called a uh, role apply, which will let us basically make um, a, a rolling a function roll through a variable in a repeating way, which will be useful for us later. Uh, desk tools will use sort of as a control. It has a uh, built-in uh, Windsorization function, which I'll just use to compare and contrast to kind of make it obvious as to why um, you would want to use a normal Windsorizing function uh, for time series data. And then calplot, if you've seen some of my previous videos, I use it all the time to combine graphs together. Uh, this just makes explaining things a lot easier. So let's go ahead and load these up. So uh, the first thing we're going to do is going, we're going to create some new variables. Um, set seed is optional, but actually, yeah, let's just delete it. It's pretty optional. Uh, we don't need this to be reproducible. And I'm going to create two new variables, uh, x, which will be a, um, a distribution of 100 uh, observations with a standard deviation of 5. So there will be a lot uh, of fluctuation. And you'll see it'll look very much like time series data. And then I'll create another variable called y, which will again be 100 observations. Uh, this time with a mean of zero and a standard deviation of one. So it'll be much more um, tightly clustered together. So let's go ahead and create these. And now the next thing we're going to want to do is to plot these just so that I can kind of uh, make a point. So all I'm doing here basically is making a plot, a one plot, which is going to be uh, the X variable here, and then another plot, which is going to be uh, the Y variable and then just combining them together with uh, calplot. So let's go ahead and make this and wait for it to load. Oh, it partially loaded. Ah, there we go. All right, fully loaded. So let's look at this plot real quick. So if we look on the left here, this is the random variable, the one that's meant to look more like real world data that kind of fluctuates over time. And as you can see, that's kind of what you're seeing. This would not be out of place in say, uh, looking at stock data, right? It fluctuates and then goes down. It has a you know, kind, of, kind of a downtrend and then an uptrend, and right? Now, if we look at the variable on the left, the quote unquote normal variable, we can see that it is very much centered between, well, almost all entirely centered between uh, one and negative one and roughly around the mean of zero, which is you know what I told it to do. Now, if I were to take uh, the variable on the right and try to find outliers based on its mean of zero, let's assume the mean is exactly zero, which it should be, I think that would make sense, right? It seems to roughly fluctuate around zero and I can judge all, sing all of the observations based on this more or less sensibly, right? Now for this one, I intentionally did not set a, a mean, but let's pretend the mean is maybe 25, maybe 30, something along those lines, would using a mean of 30 make sense to judge this data for, or to make um, as, uh, make assumptions about outliers in this data set? Maybe for things that are around here, but what about all the data way down here or all the data way up here? I think it wouldn't make much sense. They're clearly not outliers. They're following uh, a pattern through time. Well, that is assuming that it is you know, time series data, which I am pretending that it is. Um, and so that's where using rolling means to Windsorize variables comes in. Because what you can do is basically saying every 10th observation, 
I'm going to judge that as a chunk, a sim roughly similar chunk, and then make a judgment call on whether or not there are outliers within that 10 observation chunk instead of just judging the whole set together. So uh, in order in order to do this, what we're going to do is we're going to create, uh, we're going to do a normal winsorization on the x function, and then we're going to do a rolling winsorization on the x function, and then I'm going to plot them and kind of compare them, and you'll see the, the, the difference is very stark. And so when you winsorize something, or you know, we'll, we'll create a new variable called x winsor, uh, we'll call the winsorize function from the uh, desk tools uh, package. Uh, we'll apply it to x being our variable, and then we'll set the probabilities. The probabilities here are basically just what you decide your lower and upper limit of quote-unquote acceptable data to be, meaning anything outside of this you judge to be an outlier. So your 5th percentile and your 95th percentile are quote-unquote normal, and then everything outside of that you do not want. You can change these, of course, uh, to, you know, to be stricter or to be looser. And anything outside of that, I, I just want to make an aside in case you haven't watched um, my previous video on Windsorization, anything outside of those uh, 5th and 95th percentiles in when you Windsorize does not get deleted. Windsorization does not delete, it mutates your data. Meaning, let's say you have a data, uh, a data point that is at your 98th percentile, for example, it will then take it and transform it to... Uh, whatever data point is your 95th percentile, meaning it will take it and bring it closer to your center. And it will do the same thing with any data that is below your 5th percentile. It will sort of bring it up towards your 5th percentile. So let's go ahead and make this x Windsor uh, data, or this x Windsor variable. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to uh, create a rolling function for Windsorization. Now, um, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to set a window size, which will later be used uh, to make our function or to make our uh, our new variable, I should say. Um, so in this case, we'll use 10, meaning that for my data set of 100 variables, I've arbitrarily chosen uh, that for every 10th tenth, every tenth variable is a chunk that I want to group together, right? And now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to create a new variable called x roll Windsor for x roll Windsorization. And we're going to use the roll apply function from uh, the zoo package I was talking about earlier. And what this lets you do is basically, you know, apply something uh, in a rolling manner throughout a data set in a, in a repeating, uh, in a repeating fashion, right? So again, we'll be using the same variable, which is x and the width, which is, you know, how many or at every what observation will the the uh, the function reapply will be our window size which is 10 as we said earlier and then what we will do is we will call a function which we will uh, create ourselves onto x and we will define it uh, below here and so what we do here is the first thing is we'll set we will create uh, a quantile in and so we will uh, name this w. And as before, these quantiles will be based again, obviously, on the variable x. And the probabilities as before will also be the fifth, or I should say, I should point here, uh, the fifth and the 95th percentiles. And then uh, what we are stating here is that when you have uh, your variable x, if it is smaller than w1, so w1 in this case would be your fifth percentile. Uh, then the variable will be transformed into W1, which is what Windsorization does. It transforms variables. And then we set a uh, another constraint, which is if X is greater than W2, again, W2 in this case will be your 95th percentile, or you could say quantile as well, I suppose. Um, then uh, X will become W2, so the 95th percentile, transforming anything that is extreme uh, into kind of those constraining uh, upper and lower limits, or lower and upper limits, however you want to think about it. And then, uh, this, this is just to help the function do uh, its job, we need to call the mean for every 10th uh, observation, because that's how you will help determine um, if your data is too far, you know, from, from the mean, too far away from the, um, you know, the, the, the first constraint, which is 0 0.05, or the uh, upper end of the constraints, which is uh, 95.
Uh, and then at the end here, this is we don't actually need to worry about this for our purposes because we're using a uh, a window size of 10. Um, so usually this will be useful if you're doing window sizes that are um, odd numbers. So like you know nine, seven, or you know <laughs> any odd number, um, because there is no you know real center between one and nine. It would be 4.5, and then you could uh, set this to something other than center to account for that. All right, so let's go ahead and apply this to create a new function. All right, now let's plot these. And then when we plot these, you'll see um, very starkly the difference between using a rolling mean and a non-rolling mean when uh, transforming or when winds arising data and trying to transform outliers. Uh, so as before, I'm just going to create um, two plots, one which will be for the, uh, so this one will be for the normally winds arise variable. And this one will be with uh, the winds rise variable with the rolling mean. And then I will combine them again uh, using calplot so that we can look at them side by side. So let's go ahead and run this. All right, now that it has loaded up, let's look at these. So this is the one that was winds rise with a single mean. And this is the one that was uh, winds rise with a rolling mean. And uh, like I said previously, this was going to be a very stark difference. and I'm sure you'd agree. Uh, what we see here is that, you know, almost, th there's almost no difference, right? Because, um, because your range of observations is so big and your mean is probably, you know, somewhere around here that almost all your observations, except for the very, very extreme ones, fall within what would be considered a quote unquote normal range. However, with this one, uh, because you're doing it for every uh, 10 chunks, so every one of these little squares here would be you know, um, 12.5 observations, so maybe around here, we're evaluating the data here for outliers, and then we're evaluating the data here for outliers, and then here for outliers. It's much easier to detect something that doesn't follow a quote-unquote you know, local trend, if you will. And because of that, you can get rid of a lot of this kind of noisy data that just fluctuates up and down and up and down and up and down super violently, um, which can be very useful. Um, it, it can be very useful if you have uh, data that you believe either has, well, if you believe your data has error, usually things like uh, measurement error. So for example, if you were working for uh, a company that had, you know, so you say you're working for a city and that city has some weather sensors somewhere and they're asking for some sort of report based on those sensors. Um, I guarantee you there's going to be some aberrations in those sensors. And then this is a way of, um, of dealing with those anomalies and producing uh, a data set that is much more kind of uh, smooth and likely truer to life and more accurate, which you can then use for, you know, a, a number of things. You can use it to plot, you can use it to model, you can use it to do you know, a bunch of things. And yeah, that was my video on uh, windsorization or using uh, windsorization functions in combination with rolling uh, means or rolling, you know, a, a roll apply, if you will. Um, I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, if you have any questions, um, yeah, drop them down in the comments. I'll be more than happy to answer them. Um, I would also recommend that you go and watch uh, my other video on Windsorization. I'll leave a link down in the description. Um, if you're looking to Windsorize just uh, normal data, so no, or not normal data, normally distributed data, I should say. Normal data is much more akin to what we have here uh, in the real world, at least. Yeah, uh, that's all I got for today. Uh, I hope you have a good day. I still don't have an outro, but uh, yeah, I'll see you next time.